Welcome back to the Nexperia Power Live. You're watching our industrial channel. We're about to start with our second session of the day. Here, live with you, are Steven and Sammy. Usually Mike would have been here, but unfortunately he couldn't make it today. So the next session will be on in-depth discussion about hot swap and inverse applications and focus on Xperia technology and portfolio for both 12 volt computing and 48 volt telecom applications. The session will be 25 minutes. We will start with a presentation and then there will be time for questions. Questions are anonymous and you can ask your questions by using the question pane on the right hand side of your screen. Please ask your questions to our experts or share our own ex your own experience and insights. And with that, I will hand over to Stephen and Sammy to begin. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. Hello, my name is Stephen Wartenhouse. I'm the International Product and Marketing Manager at our Nextberia Power Moss Group. And I'm joined with Sammy Old Hamid, who's our Senior Application Engineer and Application Team Manager. And today I, today I want to talk about uh, hot swap applications. So normally with a hot swap application, uh, you'll see a, a board would fail. Uh, and in, in order to maintain the communications, uh, the, whether you're watching a film or there's, there's some other communication teams meeting perhaps, uh, we need to swap that board out. And when we swap that board out, uh, we, we insert a new board and the capacitance on that board is seen as a dead short. So normally one of the problems you get is because there's lots of boards in this system, uh, you put a dead short across the power supply, it'll cause a brownout. So you want to control the, the, the inrush current uh, with this new board. And to do that, we would normally rely on, uh, on a MOSFET. So the solution for uh, this type of application, we use a hot sweat, uh, hot swap controller with a power MOSFET, and this limits the inrush current as the capacitance is on the board charge. Uh, you can see uh, there's a schematic on the page there with, with the controller and the MOSFET in question. And for this, we, we've just simplified with a 48 volt power rail. So there's two key modes of operation there. So you can see over there, the first mode of operation, we want to limit the, the current into that uh, into that board. And in order to do that, we need to, the MOSFET to behave like a, a resistor. In fact, it's like a voltage controlled resistor. So we put a ramp on the gate of the MOSFET and that changes the resistance from a high resistance to a low resistance. And that limits the inrush currents while the capacitors charge. And for this, the, the strong linear mode performance is absolutely key to uh, reliably managing that inrush current. Uh, we get a very lot of power dissipated during this charge up cycle. Once we've charged up the capacitances, uh, we want this MOSFET to act just like a, a, a very low uh, resistance switch. So we want it to be as invisible to the system as possible. Now it's fully turned on. And for this to happen, we want the lowest RDS on possible. This minimizes the I squared R losses uh, and it helps us achieve the maximum system, system efficiency. So it stops us heating the board up when we don't need to. So we've developed some parts which uh, I've got enhanced SOA for hot swap applications. And the features of these parts, so we, we, we've got for the 25 and 30 volt portfolio, these are recommended for 12 volt computing systems. Uh, at the 80 and 100 volt portfolio, these are recommended for the 48 volt telecom, computing, and industrial applications. We want low RDS on. Uh, this helps us maintain the very low IR squared losses uh, for the high system efficiency. Uh, and we want improved thermal stability. So this elim eliminates the Spirito effect and it gives us ultimate SOA performance. Uh, we want the product to be robust, so we use a, a, a copper clip, LF pa package technology. This gives us very high performance in thermal and electrical uh, in the packaging. And we offer this in LF pack 56E, which is a 30 millimeter squared, and that replaces a D2 pack. Uh, that 
gives us 80% footprint saving on the board, which is quite considerable considering the amount of power being dissipated. And because it's a lower profile, we also get a 75% height reduction. Uh, we've also got development our LF pack HE8 uh, for these applications, and that will give us the ultimate hop swap uh, performance. It'll give us the lowest RDS on uh, possible while still achieving a very high SOA and the, its footprint compatible with some other 8x8 packages. For these uh, products, we fully characterize the hot SOA at 125 degrees on the data sheet. So there's no need for thermal derating calculations uh, and trying to work out what the product would act like at hot temperature. We've done taken that our uh, requirement away from you. We've put that on the data sheet now. We also achieve improved current sharing. So sometimes one MOSFET isn't enough and you need to connect these parts in parallel. So we've achieved some current sharing within our technology and that allows for this easier parallel and it gives you even higher current uh, capable uh, applications. We've got a TJ max of 175 degrees C and that helps us meet the IPC 9592 requirement, uh, which is derating. And it's ideal for telecom and computer applications. So I want to talk about two parts here. Uh, we've got uh, our existing technology, which is a, a PSMEN 3R9 100 YSF. That's regular technology, uh, which doesn't have any uh, enhancements for the SOA. And we're comparing that with a PSMEN 4R8 100 YSE. So you can see here that the RDS on is very similar. Uh, for the two parts, we've got a 4.3 milliohm compared to 4.8 milliohm. So this shows that as we go to our enhanced SOA, we don't sacrifice much SOA capability, uh, the RDS on capability, sorry. Uh, however, if you look at the SOA capability, we've got at least three or four times stronger SOA than our regular technology. So if we look at the 50 volt, line uh, for 100 milliseconds and you can see there that we have 1.2 amps with a PSMN 3R now 100 YSF, S, YSF and that goes up to 4.5 amps so that's at least three times the capability and then at 10 milliseconds we go from 2 amps to 8 amps and at 1 millisecond it's 6 to 18 amps so we get that 3 to 4 times stronger SOA and the sacrifice we make is a 10% higher RDS on. And you can see there on the regular technology, uh, there's a spirito knee on the SOA curve. So this is usually where the thermal impedance, uh, the thermal power starts to get higher than the electrical power, and we end up with an unstable thermal runaway effect. With our enhanced SOA, you can see the spirito knee is completely removed this means that these are thermally uh, enhanced. These are capable without having that runaway effect. They work very stable. We mentioned that the 5x6 package is an ideal replacement for uh, a D2 pack. So we have a, our Gen 2 enhanced SOA products there. This is a PSMN 4R8 100 BSE. It's in the D2 pack. So that's your 160 millimeter squared package. And we look again at the 50 volts. And if we look at the one millisecond curve there, we can see at 50 volts at one millisecond, we've got 40 amps capability with 4R8. Uh, and if we replace that with a 5x6 package, we've got 16 amps capability. However, one millisecond uh, is quite a short period. And that relies mainly on the silicon rather than the package. If we start to look at something which is more realistic, which is in the 10 millisecond area, you can see that for the Gen 2 SOA, we've got 10 amps capability compared to 8 amps capability for a 5x6. So we've got an 80% smaller footprint, uh, and we've only got a 20% weaker SOA at 10 milliseconds. We've also uh, got the ability to remove the Spirito effect which is something that we didn't incorporate with our Gen 2 technology. So at the higher voltages, as we get above the 50 volts and the Spirito effect becomes more uh, onerous, that is taken away with our latest Gen technology. 
Okay, and I mentioned earlier that we actually have uh, a, a, a thermal D rating on the data sheet. So you can see here, this is how we would normally measure uh, the, the, the MOSFET SOA capability. We will take several uh, measurements of several devices and we test this at, at 25 degrees C. And here for the one millisecond line, you can see we've, we, we show that with the, uh, the, the blue circles and we draw this blue line, which is underneath. So that blue line will be underneath the capability of what we test. In the past, we would derate based on the power derating calculations. And for that one millisecond curve, when we derate for 125 degrees, see, you see this blue dotted line. That's where we would normally have derated if we went through the calculation method. However, what we did is we tested uh, the parts. And you can see here that when we test the parts at 125 degrees C, uh, this gives us a much better capability than that original dotted blue line capability, the, the one that we calculated, uh, which means we, we, we're over-engineering, uh, the, 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 causing our en engineers to over-engineer products. What we ideally would like is to put the OT SOA line in the graph and you can see here, that's what we've done so 125 degrees c there is a small derating from a 25 degree c line uh, but this is based on actual test rather than some calculation and this is quite a busy graph and it looks quite busy we, it's, we, we've included the lines for both the uh, 10 millisecond and the 100 milliseconds as well but you can see how the derating from theory uh, from the actual lines uh, can be quite onerous and it can take a lot of capability away. In this instance, at one millisecond, we derate from 33 amps to 29 amps, but previously when it was calculated, that went down to 12 amps. So it's a big improvement with that ability to test. With that, I'm going to pass over to Sammy, who's going to talk more about the, uh, the linear mode operation. Thank you, Stephen. Um, my name is Sammy, as um, mentioned earlier. Um, the linear mode operation is a big topic, but I'll do my best to try to cover it, or cover the basis of it in this uh, short space of time. Uh, next slide, please, uh, Stephen. So, um, two main um, parameters that are um, affected by temperature, um, and they are um, that kind of influence the linear mode operation. Uh, one is the VGS threshold, which tends to reduce with the uh, temperature going up, and that allows the flow, more flow of a, of a current. As opposed to the um, RDS on of the MOSFET, uh, while temperature increases, it increases the RDS on, and that reduces the flow of current. So they have opposing effects with high temperature. And this will come apparent as to how it influences the linear mode operation. Next slide, please. Um, so this is reflected in the characteristics or the transfer characteristics of the MOSFET. Um, now this captures, this uh, transfer characteristics graph captures the behavior of the MOSFET during linear mode. And by linear mode, uh, it is meant to be the transition between on and off and off and on. Now, particular uh, applications such as a uh, hot swap application, this transition is extended or is stretched so that the, uh, the MOSFET is kept in this transition for a longer period of time to what it normally is subjected to. MOSFET tends to switch on uh, in nanoseconds while in uh, linear mode um, operations such as hot swap, it is held within 10, 100 milliseconds and onwards. Now, as we can see here, the temperature affecting the VGS threshold on the graph to my left, below what uh, that crossing point, which is a ZT, ZTC point, um, with temperature, the VGS threshold reduces, which will allow more current. So that region is referred to as unstable. That's because with temperature, you get a big jump of current that now goes through. As you go up, with the VGS threshold, you move into the RDS on type of area where with temperature, there's less flow of current and the, um, the, the, the region is referred to as a stable region. Those 
um, um, the, these aspects of the, uh, the characteristics will um, reflect on how strong the SOA of the device is. And one of the techniques to, to use is to try to aim for the ZTC point to be lower for the, uh, to, to achieve a strong SOA performance. Next slide, please, um, Stephen. Now, just to put in perspective that ZTC point, what occurs. So below the ZTC point, what we refer to as a, a the area of uh, instability, because of the temperature effect in the VGS threshold, meaning that more current flows. And if it happened to be one spot within the dye that is conducting more than the rest because it got hotter to the adjacent cells, then more current will flow. And as more current flow, will heat up even more the, the, the spot. And that carries on in kind of a loop, um, which then result in a, a thermal runaway, which calls um, the uh, hot spot, um, sorry, hot stop, hot spot. Between hot swap and hot spots is quite a, 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 a tongue twister. Um, it causes the spot to heat up and causes damage. Now, the opposite effect occurs above the ZTC point, where because of entering into the RDS on, then the, uh, for the VDS threshold um, increases and slows down the, um, the flow of the current, which gives it stability and therefore um, the hot swap, hot swap is not um, is not as bad uh, below the ZTC point. Next slide, please. Uh, now, just to again get into the details of that, we are illustrating here a cell within the the, the die. This is a cross section of the the die, and if that cell happened to have a slightly different thermal impedance or uh, has a, a different characteristic, then the VGS threshold of that cell happened to be lower to the adjacent cell, it would start conducting uh, more current. And in doing so, it will heat up. And by heating up, it will then uh, require less of a VGS threshold. Uh, and, and, and that carries on until it, it pops. And that is enough for the device to be damaged. Now, we're looking at the list of the uh, parameters that uh, affect this kind of uh, behavior of, of that particular cell. Now, the um, diffusion process, variation and diffusion process can, can affect that. Uh, the, the, the location of the cell within the dye can ha also has um, an, an effect on how it behaves. And all these um, have been looked into for this new generation SO, enhanced SOA to um, you know, to engineer it so that we remove all these thermal deficiencies and remove the um, uh, spiritual effect and enhance this uh, technology that allowed us to move from a what used to be a D2 pack to now an NF pack 56 as a, as, a, as an example. If we move on to the next slide, please. Um, yeah. Now to to put things in perspective in terms of the SOA performance. Um, the way SOA is tested, or the way we test and uh, the, the device and the device is characterized uh, and the graph is driven, uh, this is done by applying a constant voltage and a constant current in a square pulse form. Um, and that is uh, incremented to failure point. And we record the last pass from which then we derive the graph. So the graph you see in the data sheet is based on a square pulse, which is a square um, VG, you know, VDS as well as a square pulse from the uh, current. However, looking at the real life application, which is on my right, what tends to happen is as the, um, the, the capacitive load um, is charging, the VDS across the MOSFET um, decay. So it starts with the um, the, the full voltage uh, you know, um, appearing across the MOSFET. And then as the, the capacitive load is charging, then the VDS decays. That results in a triangle uh, pulse rather than a square pulse. And the theory is, which has been verified and I'm going to in a moment, is that with the triangle uh, pulse, the current capability is twice as much as what you get with the square pulse. If I go on to the next slide, please, uh, Stephen. That is shown here. Um, it was mentioned earlier, the, uh, 
the difference uh, between the current capability uh, at different points. Now, if we look at the point of uh, most relevance, uh, relevance is the 50 volt and a hundred milliseconds. Uh, the from a previous generation, we can see that the achievement of that point is six amps, while the uh, the new generation achieves 10 amps. Um, this is um, this has been verified. If you can click on the next slide. Um, that the triangle shape uh, pulse gives you double the current capability of the square pulse. Now, 400 amps has been achieved with the triangle, while the data sheet highlights 200 amp, uh, which is given in data sheet. Um, now, the removal of the spiritual effect helps a great deal in terms of um, knowing the uh, or predicting the behavior of the MOSFET cross the voltage range of the VDS. If we move on to the next slide, please. Um, and as ad added benefit to this technology is the improved current shared when the MOSFETs are paralleled in the linear mode application. Now here, uh, we're using the same board uh, that is shown on my right. Uh, two devices from a D2 pack package, as well as two devices from an LF pack 56 package were used. Exactly the same profile was subjected to both devices. And yet we see on the very far left picture, the, uh, the green, the, the scope plot um, showing the green and yellow current going through each of the D2 pack MOSFETs. Um, not, you know, although sharing the current, but not a great deal of um, uh, balance there. If we look at the, the scope in the middle, uh, then the two are pretty much superimposed uh, to one another. This is how well the current is shared between this, uh, these two LF pack 56 that has the latest uh, generation uh, enhanced SOA. Uh, and with that, I'll leave you with the last slide that I think Stephen will take from here. Yes, so uh, we have uh, lots of resources available. Uh, at next period, we, we've taken a lot of time over the last few years uh, and a big focus of our attention on uh, safe operating area, hot swap applications, uh, whether that's e-fuse or for battery protection. So we have lots of uh, requests for, for samples. And if you have any requests for any of these samples, please get in touch with your local sales rep or distributor. Uh, we can also uh, make them available online. So if you can go to uh, our website, buy the parts on my uh, samples online. We also have an interactive parametric search tool. So you can select a MOSFET based on voltage package, RDS on, etc. So again, there, there's a web address there to go into our parametric search tool. And we have uh, quite a lot of data sheets and application data available online as well. So if you go to nextperiod.com and look for more information on aspects with an enhanced SOA, you can see the, the, the link there. Uh, you'll be able to see the data sheets for these products and any application notes we've got available. And also we've got hints and tips on guidance for, for MOSFETs and, and our gallium nitride products. And you can uh, request a free copy of an Xperia application handbook in digital or hardback form. I, I actually prefer it in hardback form because I can make notes in it. And again, if we go to efficientywinds at nextperia.com, you can see... Uh, some of the, uh, the the content of the application handbook there. Uh, and with that, I'd like to uh, open the floor for any questions or any insights anyone would like to share. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for this great session. We have a couple of questions coming in, um, short on time a little bit. Let me start with the first one. Uh, for practical applications, is it more often that the SOA lies in 10 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds? Um, I can take this. Um, you see anything in, in between. Um, so the, it's, it's common, very common, the 10 milliseconds as well as 100 milliseconds and anything in between. As a company, what we tend to do with our customers is for specific uh, pulses such as 30 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds, and we can provide those on a request basis. Okay, thank you. Um, 
Second and probably final question for this session. Isn't it safe to trust the derating theory even if it's over-engineered? Do you want me to take this, uh, Stephen? Yeah, you, you take it. Yeah. Um, uh, that is uh, entirely uh, up to the designer. Uh, uh, what we're trying to say here is that the um, you don't necessarily need to be overcautious because we do provide this data. Um, it's, it's a given that we provide in this data based on real, on real measurement. Uh, it is, of course, up to the designer how comfortable they, they feel. But those data that we provide are verified in a lab. So it's not theoretical, it is based on real data. Good. So great questions. But um, I guess it brings us to the end of, uh, of this live session. So I want to thank Stephen and Sammy for this, uh, for this great presentation. And if you want to know more, as uh, Stephen already showed, there's much more information uh, available. There's the research links on the, on the screen. But also there's an opportunity for the, for the chat live eh, with the Power Expert. Also, if you didn't have an opportunity to get your answer, uh, on the question you had, please make use of this uh, of this chat uh, option. You can always watch the um, the presentation also in action in the on-demand section uh, where Sammy presents uh, these products, and also um, people asking if this recording is available. That's a yes. Recording is available as well as the uh, the presentation is available um, for download. Right. So please stay around. Our next live session on why would you need a 500 amp MOSFET will start after a short break. <laughs>